Chris, how are you today? Mike, I've got more shit going on in the Jack in the Box menu. You better buckle your chin strap because I got a ton of stuff over here. Man. Yep. Let's roll. All right. Well, then let me just set this up. Okay. Let's just start with. Uh-oh. Okay. So we've got um, oh, Christ. more stuff going on with pricing. And I just want to talk about this because yesterday I had mentioned that the financial press is starting to catch on to my original thesis, which is that the prices are going to go I bet they're lower. watching the show. I'm sure they are. They have to be. Yeah, there are a lot of people that watch the show. And uh, check this out. Look at the look at the wording here. That that's what's really interesting. Home sellers drop prices as coronavirus chokes economy. Oh yeah, that's no. kind of you know that's some interesting language. That's okay? ominous. The so, black background. Yeah, and uh, so it appears that there's a significant group of people who feel a need to compete. Okay, so uh, this is uh, Weiss Analytics, a company looking, uh, the company looked at listings in the nation in the nation's 30 largest metro areas and found that a quarter of sellers have discounted their asking prices compared to their property values in February, which, by the way, is what I've been saying since day one. January, February prices. And it's unbelievable. Now, think about this, folks. Here's what's really, really incredible. Think about this. We are sitting here in May, which is the hottest month nationwide to sell a house. And they're comparing May to February, which typically is one of the worst months to sell a house. That's kind of incredible if you think about it. You got to put it in the right frame, okay? So sellers in most metro areas have trimmed their home prices by five, which you and I have said, five I'll be a monkey's uncle. Right. Keep Five going, Mike. Five to 10%. But those levels vary. In Pittsburgh, where an aggressive statewide lockdown has prevented real estate transactions altogether, sellers who cut their prices are listing at an average discount of 20%. In Phoenix and oh Sacramento, God. the average price cut is just 3%. Now, look at this. Pittsburgh, 20%. Baltimore, 10%. San Antonio, 10%. St. Louis, 9%. St. Louis is a big market? Well, it's it's a large metro market. It's one of the 30 largest metro markets in the United States. Okay, I'll buy that. And so Kansas City, Cleveland, Chicago. Okay, so listen. Here's the thing. If you're seeing the asking price on a property at 7 8 9% below where it was in February... The actual sales price typically is going to be a little bit lower than that. Often 92 to 93% is what the national average bumps around at. Mm-hmm. So if you're asking 100,000, the typical discount after closing and you know negotiating on, you know, a new roof and blah 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 is somewhere between 6, 7, 8%. So the prices are actually going to be even lower than what the asking price is. Things don't sell at 100% of asking price typically, and certainly not in this market. No, absolutely not. So So anyway, so exactly what I've been saying since day one is that the prices are changing, and now you're starting to get some ominous language being used by the financial press. Again, this is just unheard of language. Uh, home sellers drop prices as coronavirus chokes economy. And so, but you read through this and the data, it's not just like a flashy headline. The data is supporting this too, that you're seeing this these uh, declines in asking prices. And, you know, while Pittsburgh is an outlier at 20%, um, you know, Baltimore, San Antonio, Philadelphia, you know, Houston, these areas, you know, seven, Seven to ten percent seems to be kind of the norm, and uh, so that's you know that's telling you prices are, are adjusting downward. You can't have this level of unemployment and uh, have all these other issues, uh, you know, difficulty in borrowing, et cetera, and not have a decline in prices. So anyway, let's jump over to what you have. Um, um, before we do that, yeah, um, you're going to have to run down to the uh, gas station with me. Being your, your clairvoyant, I need you to help me with some lottery tickets later on. All right. Okay. So guess Happy to what? Do it. Let's hit the. Well, wait, wait. Let, let, let's let's set this up. Okay. So 
Um, we've looked at a bunch of houses on Cottonwood. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, there was like a fixer over yep, there. Yep, hit the so. button, Mike. Right. Dude, we should have been buying up everything we could on Cottonwood Drive. There's another sale on Cottonwood. 503 okay. Cottonwood. We have talked about this house before. Yeah. This went on the market at 420, sold at 420. Okay. Um, hit, hit the one button. So we had 503 Cottonwood sold. We had 324 Cottonwood sold. We had uh, 228 Cottonwood is pending all around... 400, 420. So okay. somebody's, that was a fix or somebody's going to make some money on that. So that one has officially sold. We visited that one earlier. So we were going to talk about well, it. Well, so, but it sold at asking price. Sold at asking price. Yeah, but them. those ones that are selling on Cottonwood are all renovated houses that are ready to go. And uh-huh. that, that supports what we were saying last week sometime that yeah. most of these that are selling at asking price are ones that are totally ready to go. They're all, they're like brand new. And yep. those are the ones folks are jumping on. These ones that need work, <laughs> folks aren't really crazy about. Yeah. Um, let's look at, remember this little house? It looks familiar. 329 Pennsylvania. Okay. Okay. So this had a price adjustment, Mike. I want to show you this. You see the, you see this number right here? Oh yeah. Okay. $250,000 price adjustment. Well, yeah, I think they, they, it was a key error. I don't think it was a key error. I think, I think that was, I think that was very methodically done. So what they did here, Mike, was they were at 590 and they end up going to 549 but they went to 799 first. I don't know how that's a key error cuz that that doesn't make any well, sense. Well, it was only it, it, the reason it was a keyboard error cuz it was only in the MLS for like uh or reflected even on in these websites for only an hour or two. I think they did that intentionally so on the IDX feed. Uh-huh. On Zillow it looked like a big price reduction. I think that was an int- I think that was an well, it could be. I mean, who knows? Um, but but it's that e- one's but, taken. You know, again on Zillow, you can just you can see where it went from five eighty to seven forty nine, and then no, actually, I'm looking at it right here. Hit the hit the one button. Yeah. It does it doesn't reflect that, but it does in my uh, in my email feed. See how it went five eighty. Mm-hmm. The and seven five forty nine. Yeah, the, yeah. So they didn't even record the, the yep. seven hundred. So that one is going. That one's now down about well, thirty thousand. Yeah, it went from five eighty to five forty nine. Yep. Which is still, you know, really a strong price for a duplex in that market. And that house, and that thing's not even done. It's not one hundred percent done. That's the one that uh, I was goofing around with that guy trying to buy. That's that house again. Okay. Um, another unfortunate thing. Here okay. is eleven seventy two. We've looked at this house before. Okay. See that expired. Okay. So we're gonna see if this comes back on the market. This thing went expired at four thirty five. Okay. And somehow this guy got bought. He, he got he got talked into buying this house uh, four thirteen of twenty eighteen. Okay. What was the address there? That is eleven seventy two Louisiana. Okay, eleven seventy two Louisiana. He bought this thing for four sixty in twenty eighteen. Okay, and now he's looking at maybe taking a loss. Yeah, well, it's a tough market to be selling in. Yeah, so I don't know if that's a miscommunication between the realtor or an unwillingness to sell, or I don't think the guy really has to sell. I mean, if you're if you're looking at taking a loss, you don't have to sell it. Hold on to it. Yeah. Okay, so this is where it gets exciting. Okay. We're back in lighthouse in the condos. Oh yeah. Okay. So the setup here was there's a, uh, these are very inexpensive condos. We yep. talked about this in a prior episode. They're real close to the water on the water and uh, it's the most affordable housing in the San Francisco Bay area, especially with water views or, or right next to the water. So exactly. these were all right around like a little over 200,000. And then the prices started dropping. They started, they started racing down to the buyer. Yeah. So what do we got? So this was 531 lighthouse. It, it went down to 196 uh, or yeah, 196, nine and got, it looks like it got a uh, contract. It's, it's showing okay. contingent, no show. Great. This was the really nice of the two. There was two at the size that were so around it's in the- contract, but they dropped, to 196 and then they they picked up a buyer yep they picked up a buyer so then okay. their their competition which was at like 200 or 205 or which was at 200 yeah uh yeah they're at 199 all right they went down to 189 wow yeah okay so now we've gone from like the low 200s uh-huh. into the 190s and now we've got somebody that's dropped because the one went into contract that was at 196 so you got these people, boom, 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 button heads, right? And so the guy that doesn't have a contract said, I, hey, I'm got, I got to do something, which, by the way, is exactly what it was saying in that article that I showed you just a couple minutes ago. 
Mm -hmm. We're talking about here that the sellers now are starting to compete, especially on these head-to-head -head deals. Exactly. Okay. So, so you he dropped to 189. You, yeah, yeah, dropped to 189. And it's active, not in contract. Exactly. And it, it just dropped uh, three days ago yeah. to, to, to 189. Now, you had said when the uh, condo at 531 when the contract at 196.9, we speculated it was probably going to really be about 190. And you're like, yeah, they're, they're going to... They're going to get a buyer on 475 at about 180. Well, they're at 189 is the asking yeah. price. Going to bet you're right. Going to going to bet that thing comes in right around the low 180 mark like you were talking yeah. about. So now we're around the corner again in in Worden. Remember we had those condos in Worden. Oh yeah, and this was the uh, wartime housing or yep. something. Yeah. This is this is the wartime housing. So um around the corner on Worden there's this these they started off as apartments. They got turned into condos, mm -hmm. and these were built. Uh, these were housing to. These were wartime housing, like Mike but said. But they were bigger uh, condos. They're right. bigger, and they were to support um, the folks over on Mare Island. So they had to be three ones by what the government was saying back then. So this is sixty-seven Worden. Okay. See how it's marked sold right there. This is three one. Okay. Go in here. Three one. Nine eighty-eight feet. Went sold uh, two days ago at two fifteen. Wow. Yep. This was uh, an investor owned, bought back in two thousand nine. Oh wow. Clean, really, really clean unit. I mean, this thing is cute as hell mm -hmm. for you know a little condo. We had sixty two around the corner. Now they're sitting at two thirty four, and we said that this thing is going to have to go down because we've got other sales in the complex around the low, t you know, almost a two hundred. Yeah, and this is the one that was really, really bad, and this is within a building or two. Okay, this is unimproved, so we're going to keep an eyeball on this one. But that one went sold, and we had the other two in the same complex. We had one at sixteen Baldwin mm -hmm. that went sold at two hundred thousand even. And then we've got also four, a three bedroom, I assume. Yep, exa mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. Same uh three one nine eight uh nine eighty eight feet. Mm -hmm. And then also in Baldwin, we've got forty five Baldwin. That's currently a two nineteen. So we have yeah. some movement in those condos over there. Yeah. We're gonna keep an eyeball on that. The lighthouse ones are interesting because you've got they're they're you know a good location again right on the water yeah and you've got four of those that were all like the exact same floor plan and all around you know 205 210 or something i think there were a couple that sold at 205 and then now the prices have tumbled down to into the 180s yeah and obviously like i just said it's they're not typically going to sell at asking price and of course if the guy that's in market. contract at 196 is now you know, if he was in contract at full price, he's going to look at that and say, "Gee, I, I can't pay 196 if this one right around the corner just is is now lowered their price to 189." So they're probably going to be asking for a price reduction before they close. Uh, four four seventy five, so. uh, lighthouse. Yes, the one that just got reduced to 189. They bought that thing in 2012 for 41 thousand dollars. Yeah. So they, they have a lot of room. These people have a lot of room to move in price because yeah. of they, they bought at the perfect time. I mean, if you bought between 2009 and 2012, um, you know, anywhere in the San Francisco Bay Area, you got a deal. And so that's I, I think that's part of it, too, is what you're seeing with sellers. And, you know, be very cognizant of this. This is part of like you really need to understand your market if you're going to buy, whether you're an investor or a home buyer is you have to understand the market and look at the psychology. Where are these people coming from? If they're coming into the market and they've got $300,000 in equity on a $450,000 house, there's a lot of room to move that that price down mm -hmm. and, um, and catch a buyer. And so that's part of it, too, is that people have this kind of phantom paper gain, if you will, on the property like you would see on a stock. And they have, they have the equity position to be able to adjust pricing and that's another just another reason why prices can can move down substantially here is because they can move down substantially and people are still way 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 in the black on these houses i mean if you bought a condo that thing's probably paid off you bought a condo eight years ago for forty thousand dollars and today it's worth two hundred thousand dollars well you can adjust the price down 20 30 grand mm -hmm. and still be way ahead and right? you don't feel it but you the thing is your neighbor may not be exactly in that situation you know but and you know what's what's funny is i was actually down here uh checking on our place yeah down there by lighthouse and i and i drove through here this warden and baldwin deal yeah. that's a nice community what's unfortunate is it doesn't face the water but 
it's a nicer community than the lighthouse is. The buildings clean, are nicer. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's very clean. So anyway, well, that's interesting. Okay, you got anything else for us? No, that's it. Okay, so I just wanted to show a property here. It hasn't updated yet on Zillow, but you can uh, look this up. So this property came on the market at 245000 It's 737 Pennsylvania Street, also in Vallejo. And this property came on. It's a two-bedroom, one-bath, and it's about um, 800 square feet. So uh, two-bedroom, one-bath, single-family home. This is a fixer. Uh, the seller here purchased the property, according to tax records, at uh, $100,000. Oh, wow. So How long ago? Mm, maybe 10 years ago. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, two four of two thousand nine. They paid a hundred grand for this. Nice. House. Now this thing's a total fixer. They went in and they started a renovation on this property. Uh huh. Yeah, they tore out the bathrooms. There's drywall down. All this stuff that's uh, showing um, in the pictures. And but now it's priced at two forty five. So you know, obviously, it's. I don't think it's going to sell at two forty five, but. This is another situation where you have a seller that has a lot of room to come down in price. Mm -hmm. If they bought this thing at $100,000, uh, they've been renting it out, obviously, because uh, it says it's not owner-occupied. So um, they've been renting this out for 11 years. It's probably paid off. And uh, Well, yeah, hopefully they've not been borrowing or, money or they maybe, on the upstroke. Yeah, or maybe they just uh, paid cash for this when they bought it back then. But anyway, I think you could drive a great bargain on a property like this. And uh, this would be a great fix and flip deal for somebody. Go back up with the pictures. Let's take a look at well, it. Well, the pictures haven't uploaded. Oh, yet. gotcha. Uh, the description has. It says here it's it's only been on uh, Zillow for 10 hours. So I don't know why it hasn't uploaded here. That IDX feed. Yeah. But um, anyway, it does show the price at 245 but the pictures haven't haven't come yet. Uh, but keep an eye on Go it or look it up yourself. Um, Scroll back up to the map. Yeah, it's not in a. It's no, not no, in no, a, the other map. It's um, not in a prime prime location. Oh, okay. I was trying to see where in Pennsylvania it was. It's on the other side of uh, Sonoma Boulevard. Or oh, yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, you're still you still would be able to sell this property. Um, you just need to make sure that you can get this at a deal. And then another fix and flip opportunity that just came up. Now, Chris and I owned a house uh, two blocks over from oh, this yeah. one, uh, but this is over in Fairfield. So this is 1619 Flamingo Drive. Now, this is uh, your bread and butter kind of house, okay? Three-bedroom, two-bath, two-car garage, all right? And three-bed, two-bath, about 1,700 square feet. The houses in this neighborhood, like the one that we – we actually wholesaled a house here. Yep. So we purchased the house. I believe it was like for 260 we wholesaled it out for maybe 285 or 290 or something. something. I don't even remember. And then somebody bought it from us, rehabbed it. They ended up selling it for 390. Uh, this neighborhood is probably right in that range, mm -hmm. uh, the 390 to like 410 range. So at 315, it's not a screaming buy. But my point here is that you're seeing properties come on now that are more aggressively priced than this would have been. This would have been priced at like three forty nine or something before. And, and got so, a bunch of offers. Yeah, and so now it's priced at three fifteen. dollars These fixer houses are very hard to finance right now because most of the hard money lenders or private money lenders are not lending right now, or if they are. It's like, all locked up. Yeah, it's very, very expensive. So we're seeing deals right now like a one-year okay, loan for a fix and flip property, they want 30% down. Before they were going up to 100%. Now they want 30% down. They want 10% and two points plus origination fees. So you're over maybe 13% interest on yeah. that uh, to buy the <clears throat> buy the property. And so and that and that's actually expensive money out here. I mean, you go to the Midwest, I mean, during good times, they could be 14 and 2. Yeah. And uh, but out here in California, we were There's getting a lot of competition. We we're getting down as money. low as 6.95% uh, for hard money. And um, now, you know, with some points on that. Mm -hmm. But now and and on two year terms, interest only, but now that's completely changed. And so you're seeing the effect of that seizure in the hard money market is being uh is hitting these uh fix and flip properties like that one that i showed you prior that was in vallejo um so again you've got 737 um pennsylvania street in vallejo this property was a project that was started and then stopped okay and it could i don't know why but you would surmise that it's probably it could be a death divorce or a, a hard hard time getting a loan on it yeah so anyway 
we're seeing those come up and you want to watch that because that inventory is going to continue to build on these project uh, houses and you're going to see partial uh, remodels coming on the market, which we're starting to see now. So all this stuff is, is coming in and it's being affected by the uh, availability of funds for hard money. Liquidity and money. is king right yeah, now. Yeah, liquidity is very, very tough right now. I mean, if you, so, were, I mean, if you had a big fistful of cash, you could go in and buy this and cheap. Just yeah. go in there and be like, I can close it in three days. I can close days. it, let's go. I can close in three days, all cash, no questions asked. Right. And I'll so take that's it like it is. yeah, that's kind of the thing. So and I do want to show, let me show you real quick on our uh oh, Jesus. inventory chart. Are we going up? Uh no, it's it's kinda, you know, we went up just a little bit here in Napa at six eighteen. Uh, Solano at uh, 716, which dropped by a couple units, although Sonoma County is still climbing. Ugh. And actually, it's climbed quite a bit, even from day to day. But you see where we started mm -hmm. down here at 1454 at the beginning of the month, actually the first of the month. And then here you are at uh, 1678. I'm so, glad Dr. Pinkerton told us to track that. Yeah. So that is, that's an interesting data point there. It's, that's a lot of inventory. Sonoma yeah. seems to, Sonoma's up. You know, you can see it's it's up, but it's not like crazy uh, climb. But the uh, boy Napa has really come up in inventory since we started tracking. Yeah. Uh, like was five twenty five. Here's the low, and now we're at uh, six eighteen. So almost it's come a, up almost a hundred. Almost a hundred. Almost a hundred. Almost a hundred units in uh, you know the course of a month. So that's that's a lot uh, oh. for a small market like Napa to digest that. And you're seeing that reflected in uh, prices being lowered. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we got any mail. Yes. Oh, okay, fantastic. People are writing us love letters. Oh, I love it. Okay, Jason McClanahan, I've watched every episode and really enjoy the show, guys. Thanks, buddy. I hope you continue to do this even after the COVID 2020 madness beach party BS is done. I'm in South Florida, and although Napa has never been on my radar, I'm starting to think it should be. Well, I'll tell you what. You it know what? It should be on everyone's radar. Yeah, we're, um, we're big proponents of Vallejo, which is just – just right underneath uh, Napa. So if you look on a map, Vallejo is actually on, you know, they call it San Pedro Bay or something, but it's actually San Pablo Bay, San Pablo Bay, but it's actually uh, San Francisco yeah. Bay. And um, that is where you see a lot of these properties that we talk about are in Vallejo. And that's, I think the biggest opportunities in Vallejo, there is opportunity in Napa. Um, but you know, you really have to, it's a very, very tiny market. So you got to be like on top of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's just not as much movement there. You can see that even in the inventory, you know, reflection. It's a lot. Solano's County is a lot faster moving market. Yeah. So, yeah, I uh, appreciate you watching. We got more mail. Okay. Jason is back. All right. I guess I didn't comment in time on episode 47, but I'll repeat. I really enjoy the show and hope that it continues. Yes, we will. It uh, will continue, Jason. Yeah, we, have a, we have a lot of fun doing it. And we appreciate your comments. Uh, keep, keep those coming uh, from everybody. Dr. Bill Pinkerton's in the house. All right. He's not really a doctor, but I'll call him one okay. out of respect because he's a cool guy. Yes. Uh, can we get an update on the properties you were putting on the market to test your theory? You know what I'll do? I, uh, either myself or Chris, will do that in the uh, private chat group. Yes. Yeah, why don't we do it in there? So if you don't know, you can go to Mike's Scratch Pad. There's a link in the description here. And that has some info on how you can join our private chat group. Um, we limit it to just 100 people. And we do um, we talk granular detail about uh, real estate in there. And there's a, a small fee to be in that. But it is uh, there's really, really great information and super, super cool folks in there. Yep. Um, so anyway, check like that Bill out. Like Bill Pinkerton. Yeah, but I will cover that or Chris will cover that one of the two of us will cover it on uh, we'll do it in the uh, uh the chat room okay so we got nn double n hi guys love your videos i am a first-time home buyer in san jose california they're on our neighborhood mike yeah like many other first-time home buyers around here i am wondering if i'll finally get in on a smoking deal that i can afford 500 to 750 k an episode or some uh, an episode or some resources about how we can know if it's a smoking deal and what kind of information to consider would be greatly appreciated. What are your thoughts on low balling offers during this time? I well, love low balling offers anytime. Yeah, um, you know, ass. again, it's it's part of it is is just knowing your market, and then there's certain markers that you can look for 
that will tell you, hey, here's where you're going to be able to find a good deal or here's where you can carve up a good deal. And as a matter of fact, uh, going back to our uh, the, the chat group that I run, mm -hmm. you can go in there. We're, we actually were having a big discussion about how to deal with that and how to identify those like on real granular detail. It, you know, so the issue is it, there are some things that are that only a handful of people want to hear about and so we talk about that in the private chat group and I, I would encourage you to get in there you can do it on a monthly basis or you can just pay for a whole year at one time but it's it's very inexpensive to do it and you know you can talk to the people in the group it's way 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 more value uh, than than what you're paying for but you really get like one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. um, you know, replies back and stuff. And, and we can talk about that kind of stuff in detail, but there are a lot of markers that you can look for both on, for on and off market properties. And some of them are really, really simple, you know, like you, you're just looking for one certain thing, like say days on market. Right. And there's certain ways that you can tell why it's been on uh, days on market for so long. And so, you know, we talk about some of this stuff again in the, in that chat group. So just get in that group and, you know, ask away and we'll, uh, we'll cover that stuff. Like, in, and it's in, a whole lot more dynamic environment than asking questions on videos. Yeah. And we appreciate you, you asking, go, asking the video, asking questions on the videos, please. And uh, if you want to get into like a real deep dive on something, uh, just get in there. Like I cut a video in there today. Uh, somebody was asking me some questions about a uh, certain problem. Properties. And so, you know, I get like really detailed in, inside that group and I'm happy to uh, discuss that with you. Uh, so what else we got here, Chris? Nothing but Dr. Okay. Bill Pinkerton. We will gather up numbers and either shoot a video and, yeah. and, and go over that or type, probably shoot a video. It'd be a whole lot easier. And yeah, we, we'll probably do that in the next 48 hours or yep. so. Yep. We'll, um, we'll get that done for you, sir. Okay. Folks, I appreciate you watching. As always, please leave comments and, um, you know, check out uh, Mike Scratchpad for, you know, sometimes I just put stuff on there like ideas that I have, whatnot. Uh, the inventory list is also on there. We update that every single day, mm -hmm. uh, seven days a week. That's updated uh, with uh, actual on-market data, okay? And... Um, and then, of course, I have links to the articles uh, down below in the description. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments. We appreciate that. Hit the like button. If you want us to review and, a property uh, in the area, we'll do that. Yes. If you want to show off some cool cribs, because Chris loves. Oh yeah, you. Can Chris loves real estate house porn, yeah, especially like we, when they're we, badass. We, had, we just got a guy. Marcus says he's the from Wolf. Florida. Well, and we got a guy that says he's from Florida. I mean, there's some awesome houses on the water in Florida. Absolutely. So if Send you have something some that's really cool. Uh, you know, post like a Zillow link or whatever uh, website you're using, and we'll uh, kind of profile it and yeah. Google that. If on you're the, in uh, Florida show. and you can send me something that's got a center console sitting in a canal in front of it, I Ooh, love that's those. Cool. That's, yes. That's very cool. There's probably a lot of Airbnb houses because they've got a moratorium on Airbnbs. They're not allowing people to rent out their Airbnbs, yes. which means there's probably a lot of them coming up for sale. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, folks, uh, we appreciate you tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow.